People today tend to think that we have a binary split where containers are fast and VMs are secure. But the past year of development has massively shaken up that assumption, proving both that VMs can be faster than containers, containers can be as secure as VMs, and the two in combination can be used to make a solution that's better than either standing alone. Our next speaker was massively instrumental in the process of defining the confirmation guidelines for the open infrastructure projects. She worked very closely with the pilot projects all along the way. Please welcome Melissa Evershood. Hello, Open Infra. It's great to be with you guys today. The last time I was with you, we were talking about the heartbeat of the data center. We were talking about the work that you have done to build the infrastructure that powers the modern data center and the future of edge technology. That heartbeat, that open infrastructure, is built upon some tenants that you all hold very dear, the four opens. You've heard folks mention these before in our talks this morning, and I think the reason that we continue to reiterate them is because they are core tenants to what enables the innovation, knowledge sharing, collaboration, and inclusiveness that imbues this community. For today, I'd like to posit that there is a fifth open, open minds. I think open minds is really important in the context of our work today. It's important in the context of the environment that we're surrounded in globally. And it's important that we all come together and envision and imagine the future that we can create together. So what is the parts of the open mind? What does it mean to have an open mind? What is that fifth open? I believe there are three core tenets to the fifth open. One is around projects. It means to pursue technology for technology's sake. It means to pursue technology and projects because they're healthy. It's a strong community that embraces disparate voices and seeks optimal outcomes for the good of the project and the good of the community and the good of the technology. Usages. Having an open mind about usages. You guys know I'm a big enthusiast for edge technologies and work heavily in that space. However, there's innovation and new usages being born all the time across the spectrum of what we're doing in technology, from the data center to the central office, all the way to the edge, autonomous, et cetera. Having an open mind with regard to these usages and being able to envision the past, integrating projects through open infrastructure across foundations, across communities, across geographies, across companies is essential and envisioning our future with an open mind. And finally, it's about you. It's about the people. It's about the communities. And Intel is investing in each one of these areas and feels very passionate and strongly about them. And so I look forward to telling you a little bit more about what we're doing. So in the context of projects, there is a community that was born, um, and Samuel was just up here, uh, the Kata community. They were born with an open mind. It was really envisioned around, hey, how do we make containers more secure? How would that be possible? Is there a way to imbue the values of security in this new cloud-native infrastructure and technologies? That open mind has led to a technology that not only does the community embrace, but it is deployed broadly across the cloud technologies that we know today. And so I'd like to congratulate Kata Containers on their graduation and becoming a pro an official project of the OSF. Starling X is another community. Believe it or not, Starling X was just born <laughs> a year ago when we were in Vancouver together. They have had an open mind with regard to hearing your feedback and hearing the use cases that are required for edge computing. They are now cloud native. They have embraced. Kubernetes, so now you can run bare metal, VM, or containerized workloads on Starling X. They're using Armada from Airship to deploy and OpenStack Helm to containerize the OpenStack services. 
They're working very hard on being multi-OS, so expect multi-OS support as part of Starling X before the end of the year. And finally, they have reduced the technical debt associated with the project in terms of out-of-tree patches to practically zero. For OpenStack, uh, there's only 11 patches that they're taking from train and backporting. Otherwise, we're on tip of tree with Stein and clean. So congratulations to this community. This has been a significant amount of work to get to this place over the last year. Had their first release last fall, anticipating their second release later this year. Um, it will encompass many of these capabilities. They're also very focused on building their community. The community of contributors is reflected here. We welcome more of you. One of my favorite stories of recently, one of these contributors was saying, I was going to do a competitive analysis of Starling X, you know, a hardened edge cloud platform versus you know, the other projects that provide hardened edge clouds and uh, really do a comparison. And then I realized there are no comparisons, so we're in. Um, and so <laughs> we welcome those participants into the community as well. Um, there's also a new white paper um, with Intel 99 Cloud and uh, China Unicom that was just published out of the Starling X WeChat channel in China, and it will be published here very shortly via a foundation blog um, over the next couple days. So keep an eye out for that. I welcome you guys to stop by the booth, experience Starling X for yourself, um, and there's a lot of sessions and birds of a feather opportunities to talk to this community. So the next area of openness, usages, specifically open SDI. We believe, and as you've heard, that it's the integration across all of these projects, regardless of foundation, community, et cetera, that will enable the best performance and the best user experience tailored to usages for various segments. And so one of the things that we're doing is creating an open SDI initiative that you can see more about yourself. There's a joint talk with Inspur and Intel later or tomorrow, and I'd welcome you to stop by and find out more about that. In addition, uh, one of the things we're doing also is focusing specifically on workloads that the community cares about, new and innovative workloads that um, are really challenging to eke out the best performance out of. And so one of the things we're doing is publishing verified, validated, highly performance optimized stacks. This is one example. This is our deep learning reference stack. It's available off of clearlinux.org. It's one of a few that we've done and very and significant number that we anticipate to do. This uses clear. It uses Kata. It uses MKL DNN optimized. And it uses um, uh, TensorFlow optimized. And together, we've delivered 14x performance improvement on the workloads that you guys care about. We're also releasing later this month the version that will include VNNI or DL Boost for our latest processors. So keep an eye out for what we're doing with regard to reference stacks to enhance your experience and the usages that you can eke out of Intel processors. Finally, com communities. The, having an open mind around our communities. One of, the, my, um, one of the things that I really enjoy is hearing about innovations within our communities. And one of those type, such innovations is the work that's been done with regard to what was the OpenStack bug smash and is now the open source hackathon out of China. This started about five years ago with a community of folks who were said, we can work together to accelerate the hardening of OpenStack. We just had the most recent community gathering a few weeks ago. And here are some of the statistics of what they were able to do together. This being said, this group has come together nine times over the last five years and has smashed over 1,000 bugs. 1,000 bugs. That's a tremendous accomplishment. Volunteers coming together, working as a community across companies to do the right thing for open infrastructure. And it has evolved. The participants now involve PTLs. They involve a ton of different companies. And the dialogue has changed. It's now around innovation. It's now around use cases. It's now around new technologies that need to be born in order to accelerate and advance the future of computing. But it's not just around the communities of developers and creating an open mind and an open place to share in that context. It's about creating an inclusive environment that embraces us all. 
This is an area where OpenStack as a foundation has been investing heavily for years, whether it be the diversity report, whether it be the key, uh, the, um, there's mentoring sessions, there's lunches, et cetera, all focused around creating inclusive environments. This is a core tenet of Intel's beliefs as well. You may be aware in 2015, we took a goal of reaching market parity with regard to our employee base. So our employees would meet market representation across all of our job sectors, no matter which geography. I'm thrilled to tell you that we met that goal two years early. 2018, we achieved market parity with regard to our employee base. But we weren't satisfied. In 2019, January 2019, we announced that we reached pay parity. I'll repeat that, pay parity. So all, every geography, every grade, every job code, we have achieved pay parity across the world, and we continue to audit and ensure that bias is removed from our compensation system. I can't, I'm not aware of any other technology company out there that can state that. This is a core belief that we have. This, is, this particular picture is a corporate um, campaign around creating diversity and inclusion, embracing um, all of our people, pride inside. If you like that logo, stop by the Intel Museum um, in our headquarters office, and you can buy one of these t-shirts yourself. That being said, we're breaching out as well. We've worked with the Melinda Gates Foundation and Pivotal Ventures to create new initiatives called, for example, Reboot Representation Tech Coalition that is endeavoring to double the number of uh, women of color graduating from computer science degrees in the United States by 2025. But our work is not done. We need to hear your stories. And that's really what Jennifer Clower is doing with the Chasing Grace series. She is listening to the stories of women in technology hearing them and sharing them, sharing the challenges, sharing the successes. And you guys have an opportunity to hear the second episode of this documentary series tomorrow. It'll be screened here at the Open, Stack, or Open Infrastructure Summit. So I welcome you um, to stop by and hear what Jennifer has to say and experience this for yourself. And finally, it's not just about hearing stories, it's about telling our stories. Each of us have a role to play in creating an environment, reaching across foundational boundaries, reaching across projects, reaching across companies, reaching across communities, to create the environment where open infrastructure can thrive, where we can all come together to invent the future that we envision. And so I welcome you to share your stories under the fifth open. I welcome you to hear our stories at our booth. We have over 20 sessions nine demos that are official. I think the unofficial counts more like 15 or 18. Um, but I invite you to stop by, see what we have to say, share your stories under the fifth open, have an open mind, and reach across to embrace our future. To the fifth open, thank you.